Hey, he treat her. Is the devil wearing satin tap pants? The story involves Bill Dudley, a mighty darn good wholesale bakery salesman. And that's about it. A character named Red, who actually is nothing more than a file clerk. Uh -huh. And one named Whitey, who is similarly employed, so to speak. Hey, Whitey! It all starts in this rather strange and out-of-this-world office, uh -huh. which keeps the sales records of every wholesale bakery salesman on Earth. Mm -hmm. Or so the story goes. Well, it's your story. <laughs> Must you beat on that confounded yeah, well, thing you all okay? the time? Yeah. Guess it kind of wore off. I'm not beating. <laughs> Weird. I'm Weird. playing. Well, whatever it is, it sounds awful. You just pee because another bread root salesman has been transferred from your record to mine. Oh. Bill Dudley. Oh, Tony. I'll get him back on my records again. Down, down. Down. You're a burning ring of fire. Marvelous record. <laughs> but uh, what about this? Uh -huh. Which, of course, is the reason he's now in my ledger. No fair. There was a Cheer. war. Strictly a temporary condition. I'll win a Tony one day. Why, at the slightest excuse, he'll slip back into his old habit of taking life easy. <laughs> Wouldn't want to make a little bet on that now, would you? Like what? Oh, say... A dollar? A new set of asbestos points for my pitchfork against... You'd think hell would just provide those. A new set of strings for that thing. Suppose an attractive young lady were to ride the route with this Bill Dudley. Yes. Say she's a magazine writer and is mm. after material for mm. an article. Mm. Say she makes fun of the way he works. Say I'm starring in Forever Class. <laughs> That's all it would take to get him back into my way of selling again. <laughs> you think so, huh? I'm willing to bet on it. Mm. So I guess... <laughs> but uh, <laughs> how could we up here fix it so that a, a magazine writer down there... Has my mm. dance belt shifted? Oh, no. No, not me. Why not? The trip will do you good. I'll cover your phones. Mm. Of course, I haven't been down there in a long time. There's a receding hairline. Even on business. <laughs> That's the way to talk. Yeah. And perhaps, yeah. as a little added distraction from his work... I'll do community theater. I'll make you bigger, mm, yes. stronger. But perhaps something a little more... Uh, Mamie eisenhower <laughs> Hmm. Oh, I never let the devil dress you. Or perhaps even... Oh, no, don't you dare. Ugh. No magic and no miracles Ooh. is against the rules. <laughs> if I go, I'll go like this. Undercover angel! Oh, no. All right, is it a bet? They're operating under a different mm. theology. Mm. All right, it's a bet. I'll put this Bill Dudley to the test. Try new enriched stuff. <laughs> Just saw Howard Hughes in the desert. Let me see if I got this whole thing straight now. You're a writer. Mm-hmm. And you want to do an article on modern food merchandise. That's right. And you'll work for the, the devil. It was okay for you to write with me today. Uh-huh. And it's the 50s. Well, it's okay with me then, but I sure have a tough time making my wife believe this one. Mm, well, so would I. Come on. So you can bilocate and assume animal form. Uh-huh. Mm. She's gonna blow the lid off the whole bread wholesaling racket. She's naming names. Now we unload the first van at William Conrad's house. They leave orphan bread on people's doorsteps? <laughs> <laughs> Why do they keep the bread in dresser drawers? Well, that's how Whitey started out to prove her point. But Red was not far behind. That's how Whitey keeps us down. Hey, <laughs> you're not down here just for the ride, you know. Start working on the guy. We got a bet on. Even the devil won't go to the Bronx. Hey, can I split your top and butter your buns? Ooh. Hey, you know, this seems to be an awfully dull job that you have. Oh? What gave you that idea? It wasn't my... I mean, uh, well, after all, it is just a... Delivery man's job, isn't Not it? Not just! Young lady, take it from me. Any guy who thinks this is just a delivery job belongs in a coal truck. Not a bread roof. I'm running you in, lady. You're under arrest for impeding bread delivery. 
So then Mabel said to me, well, why did you wear those earrings? And then we went to Nine West, but we couldn't find anything we wanted because I have really wide feet, but sometimes I can find stuff at Payless. Anywho, Cindy told me that Victoria's Secret was just around the corner, and she said they're having a sale, and she knows I'm really broke right now, so I confronted her, and, well... I'm gonna better call the cops on her. I never sat on a loaf of bread before. It feels great! Maybe I should take that job as a mouseketeer. doesn't shut up pretty soon. I'm going to stuff her full of croutons. Get your buns out of my truck. Quit loafing in my van. You really take the cake. <laughs> you, you got a lot of crust to come around here. <laughs> come on, you and me, mano a mano. Now let's take a look at the lighter side of wholesale bread delivery. Young lady, you sit there. I'll be right back. I need some time alone with my bread. Doesn't she look smart? Today's career gal in her new fashion from Weebolts. Meow. The Mahavishnu Orchestra. Excellent. And what did he say? Uh, Nothing. That's the trouble. He just sat there listening and looking very thoughtful. There, you see? What did I tell you? My bet's practically won. Oh, gee, you know, I would have sworn that nothing could make him slip back into his old selling ways. Uh-oh. Frosty malts! Hmm. Must be new on the force. I got donuts. Okay. Come back. <laughs> You've talked. I see. I've listened. Now it's my turn. I talk and you listen. First of all, take a look. A loaf of bread. Eat every piece. An important food. A healthy food. <laughs> and a basic food that can be served in more than a hundred different ways. Actually, one. Give a look. Not just one kind of bread, but a whole variety. And not only bread, but a whole variety of all types of baked goods. Are you, by any chance, trying to say that you think this business of yours is important? That's exactly the way I feel about it. I have to. It's all I got. Oh. There's something about that guy's tone of voice I don't like. It's so But just butch. because we're important in the food picture doesn't mean a guy can sit back and take it easy on this job. Why not? Huh. It's jerks like that that end up as supervisors. It's the circus of the devil! <laughs> no thanks, I use toilet paper. <laughs> if you're gonna tempt a guy, don't send Claire Booth loose. Please observe silence while visiting the bread memorial. You know, sausage. When I first started on the route, I acted like it was nothing more than a delivery job. I don't care. Take this gross of goodwill business. There's not an article you know in this. I used this. to go out to that. Well, I used Look, to go into stores go. and slam doors. And... Hey, Dr. Giggles. Hey, Duffy, old boy. How's the old miser today? Got your gold again, huh? <laughs> I had a Brooklyn accent and a different personality. <laughs> when bread wholesalers terrorized the community, Everybody down, the bread man is here! <laughs> I'll do anything you say! Let the reign of terror end! Ah, <laughs> uh, that's Christine Jorgensen. Oh, sorry, Duff. Not the Happy's Ripple Chips! So I'm done, huh? See you again, Duff. <laughs> it must have been awful. Well, maybe it wasn't quite that bad. Anyway, today I go after a grocer's goodwill a little different. I'll show you. Watch me come on to a grocer. Good morning, Mr. Marco. Good morning. Uh, just putting the salmon balls away. Mr. Marco, you want my coffee ring today? Sure be a shame if something bad happened to your store here. How are you today? Uh, I'm a feel lousy. No, I'm sorry to hear that. Because I like you, Mr. Marco. Hey, something new. Be a shame if this ran over your kid. Hey, these are pretty slick. Uh, you noticed that, eh? Sure did. Yeah, I bet your customers will go for them, too. Uh, with my customers, maybe yes and maybe no. Uh, we'll see. Go on, you know doggone well they will. Okay, they will. Don't hurt right me. Back. I played it nice this time, see? You see, I want every grocer on my route thinking... What a moron. That Bill Dudley is okay. Never slams doors. Always seems friendly, always got a smile. What's he on? 
Always interested in my store, treats my place with respect. What does he want from Never me? Never slams his trays around or makes a nuisance of himself. Why can't he leave me alone? I like to do business with salesmen like that. But his bread sucks. Look, why don't you stay here and rest a minute while I go in and check the sales? Don't run off now. Oh, I wouldn't think of it. Devil's gonna show up as a hooker now. The Mahavishnu Orchestra. I don't like the way that guy's yakking. I do. You would. You're a girl. If you want my opinion, he's in a rut. Oh, well, if you want mine, he's in the groove. Uh, thanks for the match, lady. What match? Oh, uh, oh yes, you're welcome. Haven't I seen that guy before somewhere? Beer wine. Wine made from fresh beer. That, my young lady, is my business Bible. Uh. I've got a complete and up-to-date picture on every stop on my route. Measurements of every woman on my route. I know exactly what sells in each store and what doesn't. And you can go after plus volume without the risk of getting stuck with a lot of returns. So a guy gets returns, so what? Let the boss worry about him. <laughs> <laughs> Going over to Al Lewis's house. But why does the strip club need bread? Here's something else a fella can do to get plus volume. Watch me in here. Oh no, run! I can't believe I had to waste him. You didn't have to shoot him in the face. Oh, <laughs> forgot the bread. <laughs> Say, Mr. O'Connor. Uh, I don't live with my yes, mother. Bill, I'm uh, putting in a half a dozen of these new sweet doughs. They were never so good last year, we're running them again. You telling me how to run my Since store? It's a good profit item, I'm sure you want to keep an eye on them, see how they're going. Look, I got a restraining order on Here's you. A sample. See for yourself how good they are. No, thanks, Bill. Take it out of the wrapper first. You see? Talking it up is another key to getting plus volume. You can get in a good plug when you introduce a new package, a new product, or a special. Yeah, that's how it works. The more you talk it up, the better chance of getting him to push it. Then the kids will buy it. But what was all this mumbo-jumbo business? That's something I always do before I put the stuff on the shelves. Avoids mix-ups later on. Thanks for the and carousel. This is especially important in big bakery departments. You see, in supermarkets, there are a lot of bakery salesmen coming in. They're like roaches. The you know, I'm filled with resentment. That can be a little rough. I used to give up easy on displays. I had only one rule I followed. Kill or be killed. As long as the stuff didn't fall on the floor while I was there, it was okay. I was a sick man. No more, though. Now I just throw it on Believe the floor. Believe me, there's no trick or mystery to building good selling displays. Well, a platypus could do my job. Just stack the bread so the brand name shows best. And shows off the bread to best advantage. I love each of my loaves. And give the specialty loaves the best display space. And don't squash bread to get it in. If a store is selling more bread than I got room for in my display space... Then we got a problem. I talked to the grocer about giving me more room say, near the checkout counters, or around the counter next to the register. Maybe I rough him up. Maybe I bust his chops. Now, baked goods are impulse items, too. So I always display them as near eye level as I can. The other bread boys are doing that much. So how do you get the jump on them? Maybe rough them up a little. With special display and promotion ideas. Hmm? Take the other day. I noticed the stop on my route was running a special on hamburger. Okay. So I talked the grocer into including rolls and a special display next to the hamburger. It didn't work. That's where getting goodwill pays off. Built around special promotions. Mm -hmm. Picnic displays. Wow. Especially good just before Muffin. holidays and weekends in summer. School lunch idea displays. Especially good in fall. He's going over the edge. Stop him. Better breakfast displays. Or any others that tie in with national promotions. I'm making over three million a year. Seasonal promotion displays. Fruitcakes around Thanksgiving Speaking and Christmas. Speaking of fruitcakes. <laughs> Hot cross buns and Easter cakes at Easter time. Funeral breads, war breads. Displays that suggest ideas for all types of entertaining. Okay, we'll buy the I bread. Use all the banners and cards and streamers or printed promotional material I can get. Anything to give any display more sell. The triumph of the bread! But all this talk of mine boils down to just this. This is a tough business. A mighty competitive business. I've been shot twice. But for the guy who aims for grosser goodwill, plus volume, and selling displays, Divided by there four. can be a darn good one, too. Well, now, that was quite a speech. Oh, I'm sorry if I bored you. I... Bored me? Oh, no, no, quite the opposite. You terrified but me. Tell me, how in the world do you get all of those things done? Oh, the whole secret to that is taking it in small chunks. And uppers, dexies, speed. Maybe one week I'm shooting for special displays, or maybe...
maybe my goal for this week is to spend a couple of extra minutes in my biggest volume stops just to work on goodwill. I steal bikes on the side. Always got something cooking at a few stops. Always something aimed at one of these bullseyes. Mm -hmm. Grosser goodwill, plus volume, selling displays. And are you sure nobody could unsell you on these things? Not a chance. I like the payoff too much. It's five bucks a week. Well, don't you ever slip up? You coming on to me? Sure, I'm just as human as the next guy. That's why I keep these bullseyes handy. So that a small slip up doesn't turn into a big trip up. Oh, uh -huh. well, off to the races. What do you say? Make sure you stock your truck up so that you don't, well, you know. Damn you all to my place. Huh, it's going to turn out the bread truck driver's Jesus. And another great thing about bread. It's really great. Yeah, that's you, fine. Thank you. Hope you accept bread in your life. To sell this piece of tripe to a magazine? Jeez. Grosser goodwill. Plus volume. Fay acting. Displays. Flamboyant prancing. Okay, so you want to bet. But Bill Dudley's just one guy. Oh, well, uh, maybe I better drop down and see some of the other fellows on your list. Oh, no, you don't. I just waxed that. For all, that was only a bet. But from now on, I'm going to keep a pretty close watch on these guys. Especially when they're <laughs> showering. And so will I. <laughs> Smoke on the water. <laughs> Okay, Jerry, shut out the projector. <laughs> Some broad, eh, guys? No, I'm just kidding, of course. <laughs> but you want to remember the three basic points. Plus that. You know, after watching that short, I've come to understand that with the limited shelf space available, I have to put more stock into specialty bread. Yeah, that's right. You know, you just can't rely on your sweet doughs anymore. Nope. It's all going the way of specialty breads. Now, in a nutshell, specialty breads are all the breads that aren't white bread. Yeah. For instance, here's one of my specialty breads. It's a bread that has a shampoo and conditioner built right in. My bread has thousands of tiny loaves baked right in. I have a specialty bread that's normal bread, except it comes to a sharp point. What if you had a bread that doubled as a foot ointment? That would be a specialty bread. You know, I have a butter top bread that's actually studded with bars of real butter. Then you, my friend, have a specialty bread. I think what I am learning is that now, more than ever, it's specialty breads. Specialty breads! That Bill Dudley is okay. Never slams doors. Always seems friendly, always got a smile. What's he on? Always interested in my store, treats my place with respect. What does he want from Never me? Never slams his trays around or makes a nuisance of himself. Why can't he leave me alone? I like to do business with salesmen like that. But his bread sucks. Now we unload the first van at William Conrad's house. Wouldn't want to make a little bet on that now, would you? Like what? Oh, say... A dollar? 